So my name is James Grenfell. I'm the Deputy Head of Chaplaincy for the Trust, but based here at, at Whips Cross and joined the Trust in um, January 2000. I've been a parish priest for um, quite a number of years, and I've also been involved in theological education, um, training people to, to um, become priests. One of the joys of hospital chaplaincy is that days are so unpredictable. It can be, it can be um, very different um, each day. One of the gifts that patients get in hospital is the gift of time. There's, there are no distractions, no radio, no, no telly, no relatives often. Um, and that's quite a hard gift to receive, actually. <laughs> um, and people are often reflecting hard about their lives, about their health, about their futures, about their priorities, about perhaps reminiscing, um, uh, thinking of their regrets, um, thinking of the things that they might want to seek forgiveness for, all sorts of things, and um, as well as contending with their own discomfort and, and all that their illness and, and, and symptoms are bringing up for them. So for chaplaincy um, uh, provides a service to support people um, of all faiths and none, um, and we provide general pastoral and spiritual support as well as specific religious support for, for people from um, particular traditions. One of the features of our relationships with people fairly often is that they're very sh often pretty short and very intense um, relationships. So people who are unwell often can't concentrate for more than say a quarter of an hour. <laughs> um, uh, and so you can have a, a, a very intense conversation with somebody for that period and you know and I know from my experience that the people will go on thinking about that conversation for hours afterwards perhaps <laughs> right um, uh, but the but our relationships with people are very different from say the, the ones that I had as a parish priest where you know people over months and years and perhaps decades right these are very short um, confined contained um, relationships some patients will hear me talking to somebody on a ward and realise that they would like a similar kind of conversation. So you're being judged, your performance is being judged by all the other patients on a ward when you go to talk to somebody. Because uh, try as you might to make it private, you can draw the curtains and things like that. It, people are listening um, and, and interested <laughs> um, and, and seeing whether they would like a similar conversation. I made two rules for myself when I first started here. One is that I will only walk slowly down that corridor. Um, and, um, uh, and the other is that I will never use my mobile phone on that corridor um, so that I'm available to people who'd like a conversation. Right? So um, now I habitually walk quite quickly everywhere. So that's, it's been quite a discipline to, to I'm, I'm better at it now. It took some getting used to. Um, uh, so I think it is a real blessing. I have conversations, all sorts of conversations with people um, in, in the corridor or arrange to meet them later. Or, and I think more than that, um, in terms of the um, departments working together and the cohesiveness of the, cohesiveness of the hospital as a whole, I think that's hugely supported by the corridor. Because I'm a Church of England priest, I can officiate at emergency marriages. Um, so. Um, within 24 hours if there's a patient here perhaps nearing the end of their life um, and that feels an honor to do that um, to enable them to be to be married um, and we sometimes do that up in the chapel we've occasionally done it on on the ward as well um, and you know sometimes for couples who've been together 35 40 years and uh, and really want to do this as as one of them faces the end um, and that feels like an honor to do as well so well, good morning and welcome, everyone. Really good to see you here. Uh, we were going to, our numbers were going to be swelled a bit by some people from the local church, but I'm afraid the weather has, has um, made that, that meant that they're not able to come. And our organist has sadly had to cry off this morning as well. So I hope you're in good voice and um, uh, we'll um, sing some carols, perhaps not all the verses of all of them, um, so that we don't return back to, the, back to our desks or the wards um, <laughs> completely exhausted. Would you like to stand for our first carol? once in Royal David City. And we will sing verses one and two and the final two. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
this is the this is the chapel, and then the screen at the end there um, separates this from the from the um, Muslim prayer area at the end. Um, so um, it's a kind of shared space as well as a separate space. Yeah. Um, for Friday prayers, um, uh, uh, the the Muslim um, staff mainly um, uh, use all this space. So so they bring out the prayer mats and things over yeah. here. During the pandemic, um, we held one of the um, regular um, uh, nursing meetings here every day. Um, and we did so because um, in the meeting room where people were, were um, meeting, realized it was the most risky 20 minutes of the day okay. <laughs> um, for people infecting one yeah, another with course, COVID. Yeah. So I offered it to, to, um, for the chapel to be used instead. And actually, um, at the sort of, during some of the worst bits of the pandemic, we would start off with a few moments silence um, for people to leave the madness behind and, <laughs> and just kind of collect themselves a bit, not with, not with a specifically religious agenda, but just to be able to use the space in a way that was, was helpful for them. One of the manuals works, but not all of the notes on it works. <laughs> so, yeah, if you wanted me to to see if we can fire it up, I'd be happy to. Um, but I, I, I can't play it very well either. So. Oh.